On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Heath Oaks is a millennial mogul whose ignorance on fire led him to fail his way to success. Jenny Anchando is an Emmy award-winning journalist whose sharp eye and biting wit have led to her storied career in television. Together, they tackle today's headlines in a way only an odd couple with a dash of perfect opposite can. So kick back, relax, and join the conversation. This is Second Shot with your hosts, Heath and Jenny. I know you're all happy as I'll get out now that you get to hear my beautiful voice back, back again happy as all get out that that wasn't exactly how they were going to phrase it <laughs> but there's sure a lot word there's word a word. lot that probably would have done um, it that way yeah. another heathism yeah so we only got jenny and matt in here today yeah, with only. myself finally uh, uh, welcome back how, how did the year end for you heath was rocking and rolling with work and didn't have time to play with us on the <clears> podcast <throat> well the, didn't have much time for much of anything else yeah, outside of it all so exactly. yeah it's been fun um ready looking forward to 2020 that's for sure and 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 you know this is uh, mad uh, get, i get i got i got a, i got a really i got a really 19 <laughs> end <laughs> yeah did i yeah i just said it was busy i guess okay. i'm looking forward <laughs> to 2020 okay. I'm, I'm, I'm done with the past i'm looking forward okay. <laughs> um and you get the hint of when, what what you know your wife thinks about whenever your Christmas present is a radar gun. <laughs> I think my wife is I trying to tell very, me no more speeding tickets. Right. I think that's a very thoughtful <laughs> gift for the both of you. It probably. is. I, I think it's probably very useful. It's useful. It's a little annoying that... Uh, <laughs> how long have you been driving, babe? You said you started when you were really young because you had probably the... Probably 12. Okay. So, he's, he's, so we've got 15, 16, 17, 18 years under his belt. I don't like. The I don't man like driving. cannot. I, I know, but here, here. So here's the other thing too. Speed on your own, but I would like to consider myself precious cargo. Uh, I would like to consider our daughter precious cargo. Oh. Be speeding, careful the with speeding we, when we're in the car. Signs are absurd. They are not. It's a four lane road, and it's forty five miles an hour. You need to move to Montana. Well, I'll just speed no here. Speed. I just get a I get a, a radar gun and I can speed wherever I want. So I got you a radar detector, but I'm still a little annoyed with the purchase because I feel like you should try to be careful was regardless this, of whether police officers are around. Yeah. Was this something that you had to like grit your teeth and say like I, I'm doing this for well, the good of for the good of everybody? He wanted it. And uh, uh, who am I to deny him what he wants? Yeah. <laughs> so it's you know I mean there there are there are things that he wants more that are worse. So <laughs> okay, well, this is the lesser of two evils is, or several evils. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, well, okay, you know maybe it'll get him into kind of a safe driving mode because in Dallas Fort Worth area there are police everywhere, so he's going to realize they're everywhere and maybe he's just going to slow down. Let me tell you something, Heath. You're never going to get away from this either because I got I, I've 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 had speeding tickets in the past. I yeah. haven't had one in ten years. I haven't had one since I've been married. Right. Yeah. But I got one right before I met my wife, and I was still dealing with it. Like I was still going through the process of getting it all paid off or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, whenever we first went on uh, went on our date, and I have never heard the end of it <laughs> that I got a speeding ticket, um, and she has it in that time period. I'm like, I've never had one. Like it's never impacted the two of us financially whatsoever. But right. I still never heard the end of it. I didn't. I didn't get pulled over and get a speeding ticket the first time until I was like 24. That's well, you lived good. in the country. Yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> there's just not very many people. Mm. <laughs> you know. Anyway, okay, you guys. Elitism. Zach is off, so I'm going to attempt to Zachify my headlines here. Still and enjoying some uh, some freshly married. He's a newlywed. I cannot no. wait to get the dirt on the, just everything. I can't wait to hear everything. Hopefully, we can pop up some pictures the from the dirt? wedding. The dirt, like the excitement. Oh, okay, dirt was the wrong word. The scoop. I, I got to call her out. On, I got to call her out on misproper oh, use. Okay. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Well, happy 2020. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> That's how the year's going. So, how would you like to work at this establishment? <laughs> uh, uh, the headline is this: Restroom sign says employees may face smell check. Oh my god. 
to ensure they're not sitting on phone. So let me break this down for you. This is happening in Baltimore. A company has a restroom sign that claims that employees must follow a strict time limit or else face a, a smell check, you know, to find out uh, if they're going number one or number two. So this sign appeared on Reddit. Uh, people are going crazy over it. The, the sign attempts to stop workers from taking long breaks. So it says, if in a bathroom for more than 10 minutes, a smell check will be completed to ensure employees not sitting on phone. If it does not stink, employee's name will be reported to office. Now, I, I will say, I this is just to, to give some context around this. It's a handwritten note. <laughs> I found it on Reddit. It's a handwritten note put up with uh, duct tape. Is duct, yeah, is duct tape, yeah, not yeah, gray yeah. tape. Yeah, duct tape. Um, and in, in the stall. So I think they might be specifically targeting anybody. So there you go. Uh, from that, you know, we don't know which... <laughs> but real quick establishment this is but it's in baltimore do you know why i know you're not redneck why because you were like duct tape is a great <laughs> tip like like well, every good redneck knows duct tape because duct tape fixes anything and everything like but what uh, about gray tape I, I don't know i've never heard gray tape in my life okay so in the enchando household to sidetrack further we fixed a lot of things with gray tape which and is I duct tape so that no. sounds like the well, same but thing. Is to duct tape okay? Gray. But duct tape is duct gray. tape is gray. Okay, then what's Typically, the tape yeah. that is like a little bit yellowish and kind of cream colored? That's oh, you mean like masking C? tape? Masking tape. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's masking no, tape. That's masking. That's like tape. tapery. Yeah, see, right. see, you're not redneck and no, like well, well, thank, know all thank the God. stuff. <laughs> 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 no, but go back to the okay, story. So Here's what I want to know. Yes. The only thing that would make this okay is if the managers that 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 are like you know absurdly hovering their people this much to doing this are the ones that have to do the smell check <laughs> like you know what i mean like, like you they, yeah you can't you can't designate an employee to have to be the one to go in there and do that right yeah no you, you got to be the one to do the smell check right yeah. like like who gets to sign up for that like that that would be the worst job in the world it would be the worst job in the world and so when you look at a second shot you think are you are you putting out these regulations for things that you yourself would never even want to check or be a part of yeah a lot of people do. Lots of people like like you think about it, we just were just in talking leadership. about it, in, in corporate there are smell world, tests all over the world. Well, yeah. in corporate world and all this all the time, these people will have conference calls, will have all of these meetings, right? Because it's like what you're supposed to do. They think, mm -hmm. but yet they get no value out of it. You know how many times I get people that will will um, they'll be having their quarterly meetings, or whatever. They'll call me like, you know, I got a lot of, I got a several hours i gotta try to fill up with something uh -huh. here that's a red flag yeah. and I, and in this world i go look the problem is you should never try to fill time if you fill time then it's not gonna have any value and people can tell it people are smarter than we think yeah cut it short find a game to build the team camaraderie you know what i mean like like people are will, will like do conference calls weekly conference calls because that's what everybody else does and it's like do you get value out of that? How many weekly conference calls have you been on that you said, whew, thankfully I got on that one because that was a <laughs> yeah. boost. You know what right. I mean? Okay, so I'll play devil's advocate on the conference calls. Is, is there no value to – I think sometimes people don't bring things up because there's no sort of obvious way to do it, where, whereas if there's a set conference call, they know that they can bring it up during that time. Here, But all, all I go back to is maybe it hat is or, or can be um, something that's worthful. You a lot Worth, of people worthful. whatever yeah whatever the people fill time with uh -huh. a lot of people fill time with stuff they have the calls because they think that that's what you're supposed to do or they have all these meetings because that's kind of like uh, to fill the time and to say that they're doing something almost right and when they do that they, there's no value getting from mm -hmm. anybody because everybody can tell and feel it's 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 doing that so like I want to encourage people going into this year is to kind of take a look if you're in middle management or if you're um, maybe it's with your family, with, with family things or whatnot, yeah. right? Like, like look at stuff you're filling time with, you yeah. know, because you think, you know, you think this is the norm. You think this is what it's supposed to be and go, D is that really useful? Like, like how many things are you doing that you yourself go, I'm not getting value out of? Yeah. There's Ooh, a this, lot. This just gave me an idea for our question of the week. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I really like this topic of, of elimination. Well, <laughs> It's just looking at it and, and asking yourself, do I get something out of it? Because a lot of times you won't get something out of it, but you keep doing it, and your people 
keep going backwards more and more and more. Is it a is it a fake busyness? Is it a fake productivity? Is it that? Well, I, I think, I, I mean, I think maybe there could be an element of that, and I think people don't respond to that very well, right? Mm, like, if, if I know that I'm being told to do busy work and stuff like that, then I'm, I'm much more likely to go spend 10 minutes on my phone somewhere because, because in my heart or, like, whatever, in my head or, or me as the employee, yeah. like, I don't see value in what I'm doing. And so when I, when I see stuff like this... To me, uh, you know, stuff like the sign, to me, it's more of a symptom of what's going on inside the company. Like, regardless of how people are spending their, quote unquote, you know, free time or, or whatever. Like, to me, it's it's like these people are not being engaged enough to mm -hmm. want to do their work. Um, perhaps they're not being given the right things to do. Um, or perhaps they're, you know, like, perhaps there's some sort of poor management going on or something like that. I don't, I don't like to play the employee who always blames management for everything but it does seem like there's there's this is a symptom of of something else right i, I, well, feel like I, I think it can go two ways i think there are some that are absolutely just uh that are doing the busy work thing then i think some that that um are micromanaging so much that they think that that's useful and they can't get out of their own uh, out of their own ground to see it. So they don't believe that the employees could in and of Absolutely. themselves be be uh, motivated Absolutely. from right. within. Yeah. yeah, so it's interesting you bring up the, okay, okay, so they're checking on them, but here's the thing, if you have a goal to get to to the end of the day, and you think you can go sit on the pot and text people for an hour, I don't know, I'm kind of okay with it as long as you get the stuff done by the end of the day. Uh, you know, if, if there's a goal that's being met, I don't know if they've got a second to go text or do, do whatever or take a little restroom break. Um, usually, like, I'll give an example of a newscast. So there's a show every night at, at 5 o'clock. Like, I, I, I can't say in, you know, 15 years in news I was ever bored at work. I was a lot of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not always positive, but I was never bored. And I definitely never had spare time to go text. The days flew by because there's always that goal at the end and I'm excited about it and there's the show coming and, you know, all that's happening. So it's almost like, yeah, if those goals are set ahead of time and if, and if um, you know, everybody's excited about it, then nobody's going to be wanting to waste time. Right. Yeah, it, it never fails. And I, I can tell you this, that, um, I mean, if you're going to waste time, find some other places besides the toilet. I would. I mean, I could, I could think of a lot of places I'd like to sit and check my phone. Take a long lunch. And, and, and the public bathroom definitely is not one of them. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna challenge you this year in 2020 to take a, a long look. Maybe it's with your family. Maybe you're middle management. Um, maybe you're leading a small group of some sort of people. Take a look and go, you know, yeah, I've been doing this because this is what it was. But, like, is it valuable? Am I getting the best out of the time? Like, am I filling time? If you are ever filling time to fill time, cut it short. You would be 10 times better and have a four-hour meeting versus seven hours than if you just cut it short and actually have real legit stuff in there. Do not fill time. And I would encourage you to not implement a smell check. Just not a smart <laughs> idea. We'll be back in a minute on the second segment of Second Shot. He makes up words, she translates them. Heath and Jenny host more of Second Shot, coming up on RNCN. Quick break to tell you about, gosh, a company that has saved us in so many different ways. You've heard us talk about myllc.com. So this is the space that we've gone to when we are setting up LLCs. They also set up corporations. And, and what they do is they make sure that all the legal stuff is checked off, and they also make sure that it's sent to you in the most succinct, efficient way. So that's one thing. The other thing that you get is, you know, I'm somebody that I was really new to business. I did not study business. This is uh, really a new part of my experience. So I was able to, you know, get them on the phone and have them explain what we were doing and what we were walking through. So they have actually made a really generous offer for our listeners. You're going to get $99 off the formation of a new LLC. So if you are starting a, a big business or a corporation, this works. Also, if you're somebody who's doing kind of a side hustle, it is you got to protect that, that money in that business and put it in something separate and create an LLC for it. So the code is 99MYLLC, or you can go to 
myllc.com slash second shot and then go through and that will give you the opportunity to save $99 off the formation of an LLC or a corporation. You guys know we wouldn't have anybody on here if we didn't believe in them a billion percent and if we hadn't used them ourselves over and over and over again. So again, myllc.com slash second shot or use the code 99myllc. Ready, aim, fire. Second Shot is back for another round on RNCN. Now, I will say about the whole smell check thing, I kept trying to pawn off uh, Brighton's um, going to the potty with, with everybody else because she always wants Daddy to go to the potty <laughs> with her. She'd be like, oh, i got to go cockapoo, Daddy. Oh, <laughs> and always wants me <laughs> to go. always wants him. So we just got back from a week with my family. It was really... Um, I mean, I don't, for, for me, it was amazing. Yeah, it was nice. Um, one of my brothers and his wife had never met Brighton. They live in Paris, France. So um, obviously, that's a little bit of a challenge to get her there or, to, you know, pricey to get them here and all that kind of stuff. So it finally happened. And um, they got, they just, it was amazing to see their relationship develop over the week. And then another one of my brothers came in with his girlfriend. And it was so fun to hang out with them. And my parents were there and everything. Anyway, the point is, she had a million people who loved her and cared for her and would probably take her to the potty <laughs> but every no. time she insisted that it I'd was I'd always me. be like Uncle Goey and Uncle Gus really want you to go <laughs> want, want to go <laughs> no I want daddy I want daddy yeah. but, but the, you know did you f- I felt like it was one of my easiest weeks of parenting aside from trying to get her to put snow pants on because she was <laughs> so like so many other people really yeah, there's a lot of people hung there. out with her yeah. and kind of, I don't want to say picked up the slack but like you know, read to her and did all these little things. It was, it was like eight people right. staying in one house. So yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Sorry, but <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying there was a lot of help there. There was a lot of people it around. It was all amazing time. to me. Or you know, some nights my mom would give her a bath, or or just somebody would else would make her breakfast or things like that. I'm like, man, I love the village. <laughs> yeah. The village is yeah. not bad. I get why people say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So second headline. <laughs> For this, um, it's really, it's our first traditional second shot episode of 2020. It really is. It is. Yeah. So we bring you this one for 2020. Catfish smashes into car windshield after getting dropped by flying bird. How oh does this gosh. happen? This headline actually comes to us from Fox 4 in Dallas, my former employer. So, um, so shout out to them and thank you for this headline. A large catfish slammed onto a North Carolina woman's windshield on Wednesday after getting dropped by a flying bird. Um, her name is Resha Watson. She's from Beaufort County, North Carolina. She was driving home from her mother's home with her three-year-old daughter in the car when she noticed what might be a large hawk. And she said she could see that it had a catfish. <laughs> she thought to herself, that's a big fish even for a hawk. Then it dropped right on her windshield <sighs> and smashed into the windshield. So again, she's got her three-year-old daughter in there. At first, she was just worried about making sure there was no glass in her daughter and that she wasn't hurt. She said it didn't even scare the three-year-old. She probably thought it was cool. So they go on, story continues, to say that they wanted to have proof that this actually happened. So she went back to the road and, you know, like she was questioning herself thinking, was that really a catfish that just well, how many people are gonna believe windshield? Her. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The insurance you know. company? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had to do it for the insurance catfish company. Catfish drop from the sky. <laughs> yeah. That's a new form of insurance catfishing. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't know. It was yeah, catfish. Go, good. That's a good one. I wish I had the little jingle <laughs> belt. I, can't, I need to never say that again. You funny, mommy. Um, <laughs> so, so they went for 15 minutes, and they found the fish on the side of the road, got some pictures for insurance. Um, it was lying That's against amazing. a building about 25 feet from the lane that she had been driving in. Um, but yeah, she had correctly identified that fish mid-flight. Um, insurance company said they were blown away by the amount of damage. I, I am too. Like I'm looking at the pictures, <laughs> yeah. and if you look at the video, or if you just look the story up and look at yeah, just go and Google this it. thing demolished the windshield of this car. Like it's it's like a boulder hit the hit the thing. It's it's incredible. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty remarkable. So, second shots on this one of a kind experience, you guys. Wow. Y- you know what's funny is mm-hmm. that I think about um, I think about biting off more than you can chew. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like from the hawk's perspective yeah, here. Yeah, that, that hawk goes. <laughs> that hawk sitting there hovering over, right? And he sees all the fish, and he sees this one ginormous one, right? Mm-hmm. Says, "Mm-hmm, um." 
and he goes on down for that one versus ones he knows for sure, right? And takes it up, and obviously halfway through, he's like, oh, it's a little bigger than I thought and had to drop it on the car, right? <clears throat> here's what's funny is, here's the sad thing about me, and this is the kind of stuff that my wife will go, this is what drives me nuts about Heath. <laughs> Uh-oh, what? Is when I look and think about this story, I go, if I was that hawk, would I do that? Even knowing the outcome, if I was that hawk, I would have grabbed that biggest fish again mm -hmm. and tried to get it back. Even though I know the outcome. Because I'm like the one that's, I'm going to go for it. I want to go, like, like yeah, I'm not going to so go you. in and give up and just get one of the little regular ones. When it, whenever all of a sudden I got one of the biggest fish I've ever seen, like, it's going to fill me up for days type thing, right? You got to go for I it. I would rather risk yeah. going for that than I would just being satisfied on the regular fish that I see all the time. Right, you, you would rather though. risk dropping all the food and having yeah. no food rather than taking a couple trips and like... Yeah, because right? like, like all the other fish that are there, I, I, all I can do is fly back and I can go find me another one of those. Those are a dime a dozen, right? Like, But like that big one, that's only very every now and then, right? Like you're only going to get certain shots at it. So I'm like, I'd rather go for it. I'd rather yeah. go for it, even though it may cost me some time or whatnot. And and I hate and love that about myself. Yeah, same. I also <laughs> hate and love that about you. It was like you, huh? Like you were the hottest thing there was, so I went for you versus one of the average, right? Thanks, you, were the big, you were the big catfish. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't drop me on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I never drop you. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting way to look at it. I, I was thinking about when... Um, the <laughs> the difference between adults and kids and when the moms you know the first thing was oh my gosh my three-year-old three-year-old's like what happened yeah i'm fine yeah. that was cool that's funny exactly. mommy yeah the, yeah brighton would say that that funny mommy well that's um, what she does when she does something bad no. if, it, if she is, was the one that picked up the catfish but it re it just reminds me of how uh adult as adults and this is me like so uptight and yeah. so worried and so concerned and 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 so just wrapped up and what's going to happen and and how are things going and then the kids are just they so see the humor in it right like, like they see the the ridiculousness of it yes yeah. um i just got a book from a mom's group that i'm in and it's about having more fun and i think that might actually even be the title it's from uh the woman who created the group mops which is mothers of preschoolers it, they're all over the country so mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend if you're a mom who you know is looking for some community but at first i was like what a silly book like a book about having fun. I don't need more fun. Yeah. I do. Yeah. You know, and it, it's about finding the light in, in just things in our daily lives. And I just think that it makes you such a, like a more attractive person as a friend and as a spouse and as a colleague when you are that kind of fun person. Yeah. And I am so the I'm I'm just like I lean more on the serious side. I think I have like yeah. a, a silly yeah. side as well, but I definitely lean more on the we need to call insurance. Yeah, how yeah. is my child? How is the catfish? Yeah. Yeah. How is the hawk? Yeah. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know? How is and the hawk going to eat tonight? Yes, how yeah. is, exactly. Yeah. That's where my head goes. It doesn't go to, oh my gosh, what a, what a silly, crazy story to tell. So I think we all have different second shots on this because yeah. I'm looking at it from the perspective of, I guess, the lady. And in that you can be having a normal day, you can have everything planned out, and a catfish could fall from the sky and bust up your windshield <laughs> and completely change your life, right? Yeah. And, you know, metaphorically, yeah, a yeah, catfish could fall bad. out of the sky. Mm -hmm. Like something you could never, ever predict happening. Something you could be driving. And I, I, I have a little bit of an, an irrational fear of things falling out of the sky while I'm driving. I'm always afraid going under a bridge. Like, is something oh, going to wow. fall off the bridge? Okay. I used to I used to believe that if I drove over a lit cigarette, my car would blow up. <laughs> um, and and but then that has since become something like something from an airplane is going to fall off and hit me while I'm driving. So this story speaks to me in a certain way. But <laughs> um, I, I think about just like how how do you deal with those unexpected things that fall out of, out of nowhere and completely change the course of your day? And are you can you find the humor in it? Can you be like her and be like, well, let's just go back and find the catfish and take some pictures of it? Like, like the picture of the guy holding it up. I mean, he's smiling because he's like, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever mm -hmm. seen. Or do you let it just completely ruin yeah, your day but, and, and think? But that's the thing, though, Matt. Most people will let it derail them so much versus right. going, uh, I always go, look, it's out of your control. Right, exactly. Like what, where you're at right now, you, you can do? be mad or not, but like you're still going to be stuck here. So why not find the happiness that... 
how many people can say a gigantic catfish just <laughs> fell on my windshield? Right, like, you that got a is, story that you can tell yes, for the rest of your life. That's the craziest story in the world. It's so cool, you know? Like, and, 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 and I think the other part of it is, is here's the biggest news of all. Things like that will happen over and over to you. They're going to come. Be ready. Not actually falling from the sky, but mm-hmm. things are going to come that are going to take you down a path that you did not see coming. This is life. And the difference of the people that make it to that next level of their own success, which may be money, may be uh, happiness, may be just what, maybe whatever it is, right? They're the ones that decide when those things fall that they're going to roll with it. Mm-hmm. That it doesn't do de- like they 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 go. This is going to do something to lead me to something better. Yeah. They 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 have a faith that that's all for the best. Yeah, and they're going to roll with it. They don't they don't sit there and sulk on the side of the road and just you know, start poor pity me. Why does this always happen to me? They they go f- look for the catfish to take a picture of it because a gigantic catfish fell on the windshield. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like this is going to be funny. Um, and I also think that. If you're the hawk, like, circling around, you know, maybe if you're going into this year and you've been the hawk that consistently just grabs the regular old catfish, you know, even when you see kind of that big one, those leaps that you could do or not, Mm -hmm. but you want to stay safe, you know, make sure you can get the food to eat that night versus maybe it's stockpiling up or maybe being dry, right? Maybe if go take that chance and, and, and see if you can make it with that bigger one. You know, go off the rail maybe. But if you know, if you've been playing it that safe and you're not where you want to, maybe maybe go a little off the rail. Now, in the other side of it is maybe you're the one that's consistently gone off the rail and it hasn't gotten you anywhere. Maybe this will be a year for you to take a step back. Maybe take a little bit step back and just kind of go after and get some food every night and maybe you need to go the um, little bit longer uh, steady route of just some regular little catfish to consistently eat for a while, right? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, like take a look and kind of self awareness. Yeah, yeah. self awareness. See which one you were at. Has it gotten you what you want? And make a change with it. We'll be back in a minute on the third segment of Second Shot. <laughs> now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Heath and Jenny still to come. You know you have a good partnership when the most recent reviews of your podcast are actually about the sponsor and how well it worked for them. So, uh, yeah, you guys, Energy Ogre is legit. It's the real deal. If you're living in Texas and not using it, what is going on with you? So the way this works is they shop around your energy bills. So if you have, uh, you know, are with a certain company, they will check every month to make sure you're getting the best deal. We have saved more than $100 a month ever since doing this. And, you know, it's winter now. Sign up now. When it comes summer, you're going to be saving insane money. So the way that you get on board with this is energyogre.com. And then when you go to sign up, you will get a free month when you use the code second shot. I don't know. Was this the best financial decision we made this year? Possibly. <laughs> it has saved us so much money. So again, energyogre.com and then use the code second shot. If they cannot save you money, you won't get charged anything. So it's zero risk. You are going to love us for it. You're going to write us a review, not about the podcast content, but about Energy Ogre. And we're okay with it. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCN. So here's what's funny. It's funny. Tell it's me. funny. Haha. Funny. Haha. Okay. Is um. You know my shaming's been working. We've been picking up some reviews. Oh, this is right? funny. So I want everybody to, to to keep getting shamed and and feel really bad right now. No. If you're you've listened a lot and not left a rating or review, I want you to keep feeling bad. Okay. Listen, we know how many of you are listening, and there's not that many reviews yet. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> exactly, you, you got some work to do. You're folks. probably one of them that doesn't feel yeah. good right now that I'm shaming you. But I got to tell you, here's the most hilarious thing. This is how you know you got <laughs> a good, good sponsor. sponsor. <laughs> like 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 number one, if we have a sponsor on this podcast, we only have the ones. That we personally use, we personally are involved in, and, and are we are totally have, obsessed with. Yeah, we we have no sponsor at all that we have on this show that is because of, of rent. Like they, we literally sought them because we already used them. 
Here's here's I don't know if this is good or bad. <laughs> But for ratings, and the last two rating and reviews on <laughs> our podcast that, you know, supposed to be rating review on the podcast are both about energy odor. There you go. I mean, it, it, it's like... Oh, I'm not mad about it at all. No. <laughs> so on December 11th, 3D Chef... <laughs> the headline said, Energy Ogre is the real deal. Energy Ogre is legit. The last few bills have all been under $100, whereas before I was over 200 So grateful wow. for this. Thank <laughs> so you. So great. You guys all owe us money. All of you people who yeah. have used Energy Ogre, yeah. you are saving so much money. <laughs> and then the other one on December 14th from Lisa198 <laughs> oh, That's says, my friend, Lisa. <laughs> Energy Ogre. We just got our first bill since switching to Energy Ogre. Last year, this month, we paid $262, and this year's bill was only $92. Good grief. And that's in the that's winter. Amazing. Totally amazing. Can't wait to see the difference in our summer bills. Thanks so much for recommending. So it's like, <laughs> Shout out. Lisa does not care about our podcast. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, it's great. Like I, I, I love the fact that um, we, you know, because we do, we are very um, pinpoint on our sponsors. Like we only do the ones we like and love. And so like, it, it's kind of like a good thing that our sponsors are so good. They get a rating review, but like. <laughs> We still want a rating review on what you think about the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But and also if you use my LLC.com using the code second shot, let us know about yeah, let that us know too. What you think. Well let us know. I mean, yeah, I know you i we've had a couple friends use it and I know that it's been so easy and streamlined for them. Listen, yeah, as long so. as you're as long as you're leaving five stars, you can write whatever you want in that Absolutely. text box. Right. Yeah, yeah, I don't agree. Care. Leave I us agree. whatever message you want to leave us. I'll take it. I mentioned that book about having more fun and I didn't want to get to the end of the episode and not actually share it in case somebody was saying, Okay, that sounds good, but you didn't give me the title. The title is Have more fun, how to be remarkable, stop feeling stuck, and start enjoying life. It's by Mandy, and I'm not sure if this is the correct pronunciation, Arioto. She is the CEO of Mops International uh, and is just a, a lively and fun woman. And, nice. you know, that's aspirational for a lot of us <laughs> to stop being so lame. <laughs> now, Matt, did, did you go out to the country and let your dogs run around this year for Christmas? Because I know that's what I you did. typically do, right? I did indeed. Um, did they we, chase after any deer, hog, or um, they, they stay out of trouble? We saw, we saw some deer. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we kept them uh, away. There were um, about four uh, whitetail uh, bucks running around in the front in the front yard of my grandma's house was mm -hmm. where we stay and uh, I made sure not to let the dogs out because one of them has not seen anything like that before she's <laughs> she's young she's like a year old um, so I knew she'd just be gone like the second she saw the yeah. deer running she would just be following them um, but yeah we took them out to the country out to Springtown um, it was great uh, stayed at my stayed at my grandma's house they all the dogs had to stay there um, my old dog Logan got to run through the woods and sniff around and everything like that and it's his favorite thing to do, so um, it was a, it was a good trip. We spent pretty much all day out in the country, and um, you know I miss it every time. I, I really oh, I really like awesome. I really like being out there. Yeah, I, we we had fun too. We were in Idaho all week, and yeah, Gosh, and, the pictures uh, are crazy. Like the yeah, snow, snow up there was mm -hmm. unbelievable. We went and got our our uh, Christmas tree like we used to, and I told all of you I think on a podcast last month about how our tradition of going to get the mm -hmm. Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And we did that with my brothers and I. and Griswold um, family Christmas. We, yes, it was. Frightened <laughs> through. Frightened <laughs> through the most embarrassing fit. Because uh -oh. Oh. she didn't want to put pants on because the girl just wants to wear a dress. <sighs> I get it. I don't want to put pants on either, but uh, yeah. we're going in the snow. So it was, it was kind of. And like I mentioned, one of my brothers and his wife had never met Brighton before, so this was like day two into the trip. And I'm, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, gosh, what are they thinking about me and my parenting and my ability to, you know, negotiate with a two-year-old? And I am failing, <laughs> and I'm failing miserably. And anyway, you know, the the bottom line is it doesn't really matter what anybody thinks of, you know, your yeah. parenting, and we're all doing the best. And she did eventually put the, or no, I think I lost, and she you did lost. not put the, I did, I did lo lose. So she didn't put the snow pants on. She did put a coat on. Did she regret that decision, or was no. she not going to admit to that? She would never she admit would to never. it. She would never. She was fine. She was not cold. Her lips would be purple, and I'm she'd be like, I, I'm not cold. She did have a total ball, though, you know, getting outdoors like that. So it's sort of like you, what you were saying about the country, you know, and just yeah. going back to those reminiscent times. Yeah, and yeah. just, I mean, for me, being in nature it just fills me up so much it's so gratifying and so it was neat neat to kind of see brighton enjoy a little bit of that and and see everybody else too yeah it was fun it was fun what's our question of the week so our question of the week and this relates to something that heath brought up in the first segment and this was sort of one of my questions that i had in the stockpile and i thought today was the perfect day to do it 
to provoke thought about what you're going to eliminate. So what are you eliminating in 2020? Mm. Not what are, you, what are you adding as a resolution? What are you going to do? What are you not going to do? Perhaps getting rid of something that will leave some space for other things in your life. What are you going to eliminate? Um, I think, uh, first of all, I'd love to eliminate dog hair from my life. I've got it on everything. Um, <laughs> you need a Roomba. <laughs> I know. Um, I think it would die immediately uh, in my house. <laughs> I, I think I I realized this after um, looking back. We we, did, we we ran through a bunch of laundry um, over the holidays. Like mm-hmm. we just we had a lot of that had kind of piled up, and we did it. And now it's all just kind of sitting on the bed or in, in our in our spare bedroom, and it's been sitting there for probably about as long as it was sitting in the hamper. <laughs> and I I feel like. I really need to make a commitment. I've tried to do better about, you know, like eliminating the amount of time I just sit and look at my phone. And we yeah. talked about that before. Um, but I, I want to find a way to eliminate, like, not eliminate downtime because I think it's important to have that relaxation. But eliminate that time where I know I'm sitting there and, and thinking, gosh, if I just took an, an hour, I could go knock out all that laundry. I could go do it. Like, maybe it's procrastination that I'm trying to eliminate. But there's something around there where I have those feelings where, like, I know I need to go do this. Maybe mm-hmm. eliminate not letting it pile up to where it doesn't get to be a chore, right? Right, exactly. Like that, you know. Like when I when I do a load of laundry or when I do a load of dishes or something like that. Like just just try to eliminate Complete the, well, you know, like break things down and eliminate the big chores in my life and try to just get things to a more manageable size. So yeah, I, I, I think in a way, like I'm saying, eliminate laziness, but that's not necessarily true. But just trying to eliminate those those moments where I, I know I need to go do something and I just choose to not do it. Okay, I that's great. That is. Yeah. I love that. It's kind of an addition, but kind of an elimination. A little bit, yeah. So like, I think that's great. So um, maybe are you going to write it down? Do you put it on the fridge? How do we <laughs> hold you put accountable? It on a vision board. I mean, you don't have to do the whole vision board. We talked yeah. about you can be just different things, but, um, you know, it may be a little sticky note or something. I don't, yeah, I don't. I don't I don't know. You know, or maybe I, I'll email your wife. I started. Well, <laughs> she'll gosh. just keep you accountable. I, I started doing a thing um, in my car because I noticed when I was cleaning out my old car that, that I was selling that there was just little things in there that I, I'd always thought, man, I need to get that out of the car mm-hmm. and, and not, you know, it not trashy, but just like there's stuff in there. And I started doing a thing where it was every time I get out of my car, I take one thing with me, whether it be a piece of trash or oh, like or something it. like that. And Mm. so um, I I think if I can just take that mindset and apply it to the rest of my life where it's like if I go into the kitchen uh, and I see a piece of trash, I take that one pat trash with me. Or if I see a a dish in the the sink, I do that dish. Or if there's a piece of laundry, I pick it up and put it somewhere else. So that's what, you know, I'm trying to eliminate just the, the areas of my life that I'm just kind of ignoring. You know what I mean? I really like that. I happen to pull 50 things out of the car every time, and, and it's still not clean, but that's take a handful. on account like of the two-year-old. Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, like, you <laughs> yeah. have a different life than yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I think that's really, this is such a great tip. I really like that. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to eliminate a couple, some business distractions. And, okay. and, and stuff that I can't really like exactly say on, on, on here, but I mean, there's, there's some things that I'm going to okay. get it to where it's some streamlined, like... Um, you know, out of some things, you know, mm-hmm. and, and getting rid of some things that in and, and business wise and, and making some of that stuff um, easier and simpler that mm-hmm. um, will make things just much less chaotic, yeah. I believe. That's good. Eliminating chaos is always a good thing. Yeah. yeah. I am going to eliminate. Well, I've always had this theory on social media. Follow, Not me, right? Um, <laughs> so, well, that's TBD. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. I would never survive. So. I've, I've always had this theory on social media, follow more, support more, you know, em- embrace more. Anybody who I've ever interviewed or who I've ever come into contact, you know, anything like that. I'm friends with them. I follow them. I try to support them and cheer them on. And what I realized is that in my feed of like, say, Instagram, I don't even see the people who I actually know because I'm following and quote unquote supporting mm. so many yeah. people. And do you all remember well the episode with uh, Anna LeBaron, who is, it was the second shot sit down, she escaped a polygamous cult. So her background is also as a uh, social media consultant and book promoter. 
And she brought this up and she said, well, Jenny, you're, you've got so many people on here. You could scroll all day and still never be able to follow and keep up with and the support. The people you want to. The people you yeah. know. Yeah, so it was like, you know, I, like Macy's doesn't need me to follow them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Nordstrom doesn't need me and to follow them. And you don't get anything out of it. And I don't get anything out of it. I mean, I'm sure I like looking at the clothes, but if I'm thinking, okay, I want to eliminate, so so big goal, uh, eliminate mindless scrolling. Yeah. yeah. I think that we could all, most of That's us could stand to do one. that. That's a really good one. Eliminating mindless scrolling. So I'm thinking, well, that kind of makes me feel, oh, because I do really enjoy, I want to see what Heath posts, I want to see what Matt posts, I want to see, you know, if But it could be quicker if it was just that. But if I eliminate all these extraneous accounts, and then also the accounts from perhaps ladies that put out something that's so aspirational that it seems a little fake and might make me feel a little bit bad about yeah, myself, yeah. Like I, I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't mean I don't appreciate what they're doing, but I don't think I personally need to follow that. Yeah. And I yeah. don't think I personally need to take time to make a comment. So. That's a really good one. I like Thanks, that. Babe. I, I like that a lot. The mindless scrolling thing. Eliminating mindless scro- scrolling, not entirely because I do want to see what my friends yeah, and family are doing. But that's not too. mindless. Seeing what you fr- keeping up with your friends and family, I don't think is mindless. The mindless part is a whole bunch of stuff that you Ads don't get anything just, from. Yeah. I, just, I, yeah. When you say that, I think about the amount of time I spend scrolling through. Uh, just say Instagram, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm passing ad after ad after ad, you know, and, and they're not ads. It's, it's accounts people that, I, that you it's follow. It's accounts that I follow, mm-hmm. but they're advertising to me, and I think, gosh, I could, I could really just, and, and I just haven't unfollowed them because what, like, I have to go yeah. click on their profile and mm-hmm. click unfollow. You exactly. Know, like, come on, but really, it's not that hard, and, and it would save. A so lot. maybe thinking like maybe like um, say gonna you're gonna unfollow unfollow- twenty a day. Uh, yeah, that's a good twenty a day might be a lot. Ten, of, they might flag me. <laughs> okay, we'll say ten a day. That's that a way good one. you can like do ten it. Ten a day. You're not gonna, it doesn't look like such a mountain to Because I'm following on on Instagram like two thousand people or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it's and I've already started kind of the unfollowing thing, and now I'm gonna ten a day be three yeah, hundred done in a month. Yeah, I think that's a good. I think that's a good one. Ten a day. Um, I will say an account that always gives back to you instead of taking from you is the second shot Instagram Mm -hmm. because we do post these questions on there. Our goal with that account is to truly engage with all of you to get to know you, to hear about your family stories. And it's been a beautiful blessing to get to hear consistently from some of you about things that you're going through, about some of your successes, about some of your challenges and things like that. Second shot Facebook group also. Yes. Facebook.com slash group slash second shot. Second shot cast at gmail.com to email us anything that um, you may want to say have opinion on or whatever you would like to do and leave us a rating review where can they find you jennyanchando.com join my mailing list if you want to i sent out one email at the beginning of the year and i'll probably oh. do another one in a few months so jennyanchando.com and then i'll also be in the facebook group uh you can find me at matt stoker one on instagram you'll see pictures of the dogs out in the country you'll see pictures of the uh the old 65 chevy pickup truck that my uncle restored which yes. was a big surprise on Christmas Day. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, you can find me there. You can also find me at the Second Shot Facebook group. At Heath Oaks on uh, Twitter and at Ignorance on Fire on Instagram. Heath Oaks on Facebook. Connect up with me. I'd love to, to chat with you. Send us emails. Join the Facebook group. I love you. See you next time.